The Chargers finally got their first win of the preseason and statements were made like Tony Jefferson coming out of nowhere to give himself a chance to make this roster and Simi Fehoko putting the finishing touches on him making this team. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for nine seasons, but this is our seventh year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you to the everydayers out there for making us your first listen. Even in the preseason, it feels better to come on after a win. But to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Well, Daniel, Tony Jefferson played like a man possessed against the Dallas Cowboys. He was everywhere. Three turnovers. Are you kidding me? It was <laughs> unbelievable to watch him out there and see me Fihoko catches a 78 yard touchdown and i think that definitely put the finishing touches on his roster spot without a doubt but besides that throw easton stick was not good in this football game and i think it was just the culmination of a very very bad preseason for him a bad off season uh, but on the other side of the ball there's a lot to be excited about from the defense some really really cool numbers i can't wait to get into Absolutely. Traymond Morris Brash putting his, you know, best foot forward to, for a chance to make this team. Junior Colson getting to see him. How about just a round of applause for Jesse Minter's defense this entire preseason? It's been fun to watch, but today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. David, former friend of, well, still friend of the show, Tony Jefferson broke the locked on chargers curse where someone comes on the show and they immediately start playing a lot worse no tony jefferson in the game against the cowboys had the most impressive individual preseason performance that i've seen by any chargers since i've covered this team right. austin eckler had you know a, a performance through three games that you know or four games that got him the chance to be on the roster but like Maybe I felt that way about that then as I do about this, but man, from the opening whistle, Tony Jefferson was a man on a mission, a vet playing like an undrafted free agent that has everything to prove to make a roster spot. And after missing last week's game, David, he kind of did, but like you can't do more in a game to try to make a team than Tony Jefferson did in this game against the Cowboys. And we went into it thinking, man, it's going to be so tough for him to make this team. All of a sudden, it doesn't feel that crazy anymore. It absolutely doesn't. And he was telling uh, people after the game that, you know, uh, he missed the second week of the preseason because he was dealing with an ham a hamstring issue, but he worked with the staff and was able to get feeling right. And man, was he looking right. 14 tackles, three turnovers, two interceptions, one forced fumble, a sack, two passes defensed. He was everywhere. You would want to talk about the definition of stuffing the stat sheet. That's exactly what Tony Jefferson did. And to me, quite frankly, he looked like a man among boys yeah. out there. He did not deserve to be on that football field. I think he proved that he, he deserved that to be playing at a higher level of competition because it looked like it was just too easy for him out there. The game was in slow motion and he put on an absolute show. Absolutely. And I just think that for him to have this game at this age shows you exactly the only thing that you needed to see from Tony Jefferson when you made that signing. You made that signing not just to hook up a friend of Joe Hortiz's, right? You did it because you had a need at safety. You had a lack of experience at safety. And you thought to yourself, hey, if this guy still has some juice, if he still has some gas left in the tank, he is someone that can help our defense. You watch that game on Saturday and tell me that that's not a dude that helps your defense. You tell me how you can keep him off this roster, even if it's only one performance, even if it's in th the third preseason game against guys who aren't starters. If you're a guy that should make a team and you're playing against non-starters and guys trying to make it, that's what it should look like, yeah. and that's exactly what it looked like. And then you combine that with the fact that after Derwin and Alohi Gilman, you don't really have any sure things. A.J. Finley's had a good offseason, sure. I'm not saying he shouldn't make the team. He should. 
But after that, Thomas Harper was maybe the next guy that might be pushing for the safety spot because JT Woods switched to cornerback, right? So all yeah. of a sudden, Thomas Harper's not playing in the final preseason game, which is, you know, kind of probably a death blow to his roster chances, I would think. Yeah. And you have JT Woods playing corner. So if you're keeping four safeties and JT Woods is a corner now, all of a sudden the stars feel like they start to align a little bit. And then he goes out and does this. It, it's insane, man. It was so fun to watch for a guy like that, a humble San Diego dude playing for the team you grew up watching to have one chance to put it all on the line and do it like that. Truly, truly special performance. Loved it. It, it was cool, man. It, you had to love that. And David even sent him a text and, you know, it was like, hey, man, that was pretty nuts. I did. I sent him a text message. I was like, hey, man, you went crazy out there. And he said, <laughs> send a text back and said, let's go. I hey, love he gave Jefferson, himself, man. Yeah. And it just feels like he might get scooped up. I know he's an older dude. But that's a ready made veteran that feels like he could go play a role for a defense for a lot of teams who, who need help on defense. So, without a doubt. <laughs> tonight on the live show, it's going to be tough because tonight we are going to do a live show so we can get it out before these final cuts get out. So, tonight, probably 8 30 or 9 after Baby Dylan goes to sleep, our final 53 man roster prediction live. The first live show, I think, since the baby was born. But. Another person who made a statement and got off the field pretty quickly, David, was Simi Fehoko. And we knew going into this game, he had pretty much taken a roster spot, right? He had to keep it. I guess maybe he just had to cement it. He had to really kind of put his stamp on what had already been a really impressive offseason. And he did that on Saturday. And David, I mean, to me, it's written in stone now. They took him out of the game after his 78-yard touchdown in this one. And Simi Fehoko seems like he's done enough to make this team. To quote the redheaded beard of Scott Matlock, oh, I'm here good. to take a grown man's job. That's yeah. exactly what Simi Fehoko did in this football game. He put the finishing touches on what was an extremely impressive offseason and preseason performance by him. Obviously, two catches, 84 yards, one of them being the 78-yard bomb where he caught the pass that was probably a little bit underthrown from Easton Stick, was able to tightrope on the sideline and take it the distance for the big touchdown. But in the preseason, it's seven receptions on nine targets, 170 yards in that touchdown with three receptions of 20 plus yards and 19 special teams snaps and a tackle on special teams as well. So Simi Fajoko just literally did everything he possibly could to show this football team that not only is he willing to, you know, play on special teams and make an impact on special teams, that he's a receiver and he's here to make an impact on offense as well. And I don't think he could have done anything else uh, in this offseason than what he did. I'm very impressed by him. Congratulations to him to what I think is going to be a 53 man roster spot. And I think it's richly deserved. And for me, Simi Fehoko had to take it out of the coaches in front office's hands to yeah. a certain extent. Like he had to make himself indispensable. He had to make himself invaluable to this team where they just couldn't cut him. Like they just wouldn't be able to find a reason to leave him off of this team. Like he feels like great depth on this roster, especially if you are going to keep six, right? If, if that's a scenario that plays out, Darius Davis is more of a special teams guy and obviously a gadget player, as we show, and we'll talk about <laughs> him showing what he brings to this offense. But at the same time, Simi Fihoko just looks like a good, well-rounded overall receiver. Like, this isn't yeah. Michael Bandy. This is a big dude who can go in there and play multiple positions for you as a wide receiver and has played his ass off and, and probably played his way onto this roster. I mean, you look at the pro football focus grades, which you always take with a grain of salt, but throughout the preseason, out of all of the games, he had a 90.4 PFF grade. The next closest was Rashawn Slater at 79.3. He did everything he possibly could. He made explosive plays. We talked about it going into this game and the two preseason performances where the Chargers offense was absolutely garbage. He had three 20 plus yard catches and then he adds a 78 plus yard catch onto that, right? A touchdown Love at it. that. Gets the Chargers only their second, you know, touchdown of the preseason, their first receiving touchdown of the preseason. And those were hard to come by with Easton Stick and company at quarterback. So to have that, to not have a drop, right? Like to not even have like a miscue there, there was really nothing to bring that explosiveness, to bring the toughness in the run blocking game, right? Because he does that as well. He, he does all of it. He brings it all to the table and they drafted three wide receivers. They went and signed DJ Chark and Simi Fehoko is still going to find a way to, to wiggle his way onto this roster more than likely. And they took him out of the game. I think that was it. I think they showed their cards a little bit right there. But what does that mean for Brandon Rice? Because he continued playing and he played well into the game. Does that kill his chances? And also, Easton Stick 
had the third preseason game. They let him play the whole game. And unfortunately, outside of that big throw, it was pretty bad. So we're getting into all that and more on today's Locked On Chargers podcast. First, though, I need to talk about LinkedIn, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality candidates that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might just be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. That means if your job's not on LinkedIn, you're probably not even getting in front of enough people. You're not, I mean, 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. If you're not doing LinkedIn, you're doing it wrong. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours, hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. What always sets them apart is their ability to find those quality candidates so you don't have to be trying to fill that same job again. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. David, so many performances to get into from this one. And this is also a performance that Brandon Rice finally, finally got his first catch of the preseason. Man, I mean, 12 targets. One catch for Brendan Rice, and I absolutely feel for him, dude. Like, this is a dude who who fell in the draft, who yeah. has obvious talent, you know, gets to the Chargers, says, I'm going to do it. And then out of those, you know, 12 targets he had, I, I, if I'm being liberal with it, I would say three of them were catchable. I think I would, I would agree with that. Maybe maybe yeah. four. You know, the one down the sideline, he almost made a play in this game. That one was a catchable one. He did have the drop last week, right? And then he had, you know, the actual catch that he did make out of one of those targets. But still, a very underwhelming, you know, preseason. This is the time we hoped Brandon Rice would be able to show everyone exactly why he should have been drafted way earlier and that he is the guy and that he is an NFL player and he's ready to kind of make his own story, right? and do what he needs to do to make this team yet how you know how much trouble is he in now because he didn't have a good preseason it feels like he had a good training camp it feels like he's been good since he's gotten with the team but david it's hard to ignore kind of the difference seeing what simi fayoko did production wise and then seeing brendan rice it 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 really is and, and it's unfortunate for for brendan rice because i feel like watching the games you can see that Brennan Rice was able to get open. I, I feel like he did create separation. He was able to get open. He just didn't really have, you know, a, a good performance with the the targets that he got. And a lot of that was Easton Stick. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, Easton yeah. Stick did not give him very many good opportunities. The one good ball that he threw, Brennan Rice caught. And, and you know, the, it went for 11 yards. That was really the only one where I was like, okay, well, that looked like it was supposed to look. The timing was... The timing was was there. the The chemistry was there. The route running yeah. was at, was there, and the hands were there. That was really the only time I felt like okay, that connection looked real. But we hear about what he does uh, with Justin Herbert and all the plays he's making in training camp, and so it's you know it's a part of the evaluation process when you look at the performance in the preseason and also consider the Easton Stick is probably not going to play at all uh, in yeah. the regular season if he is on this football team at all. Right. Um, you know, which we'll, we'll we'll definitely talk about. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, for Brennan Rice, it it, it just it's very uh, unfortunate that he wasn't able to do more with the opportunities that he was given. Absolutely, and, and this is the thing: the things outside of catching the football, which I know kind of seems dumb, you know, from just looking at it in a macro perspective. You know, he, he's supposed to catch the football, obviously. Yeah. But everything else, he's doing extremely well, right? Like he's running good routes, he's getting open on plays. He's run blocking his ass off on the play for Darius Davis. <laughs> he had this the block that probably sealed that being a touchdown that stopped it from being you know a 15 yard gain and turned it into a 70 yard touchdown. Right? If you watch it on the all 22, you still can't get the right angle of it. But he starts running around, gets the cornerback off the line of scrimmage. Then by the time you see him again, the cornerback's trying to collect himself five yards out of bounds because Brendan Rice blocked him there. It's pretty clear. Yeah, to Brendan see Rice why destroyed happened. Andrew Booth. Uh, like absolutely destroyed him. Removed him from the play completely. Yeah, Andrew Booth, man. I remember doing a thumbnail that the booth was the truth. We were high on him. <laughs> Don't have to talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, though, but and Brendan Rice is the first one into the end zone, congratulating Darius Davis and got down there. So I still think the Chargers want to keep him. 
But then are they going to keep seven wide receivers? That's a topic we're going to have to discuss and deal with tonight, David, when we give our final prediction. But let's talk about Easton Stick, who definitely failed his final audition. 12 out of 29, 187 yards, 6.4 yards per attempt, one touchdown, one interception. Seems okay, but we just know that such a big chunk of that was that 78-yard touchdown. And then everything else was just so lackluster, right? Like, there were drops. Like, there, there yeah. were a couple of drops that could have extended drives, right, and, and not his fault at all. But it's just the full body of work, right? I mean, lowest completion percentage of any starter that passed at least 14 times in each game. Yeah, the lowest passer rating in the same regards. He just wasn't good, David. It wasn't good enough, and the Chargers will have to address it. I think he probably they have to keep him on the team for now, but I think they're looking to upgrade in the waiver wire. A thousand percent. I mean, they have eyes, right? They can see what we saw out there. Like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to to tell that Easton Stick has regressed past the point of a, a reclamation. In my opinion, I feel like that's yeah. it. The ship that ship has sailed. Uh, only two players caught more than one pass. He had a completion percentage of forty one point three seven percent. That is atrocious. That is yeah. awful. 6.4 yards per attempt. And like this is the, the numbers throughout the preseason for him. 25 of 55, <laughs> 303 yards. That's a completion percentage of 45.5%. One touchdown, three picks, only 11 first downs in three full games. And that, lost a, f a fumble on the goal line. I mean, four turnovers, one touchdown. So not only, yeah, not only are, are you not making the plays, but you're making the mistakes and you're making colossal mistakes that yeah. in regular season games, that loses you football games when you make those type of mistakes. So yeah. just the entire body of work was not good enough, Daniel. And, and to me, it signifies that the Chargers need to go find their next backup quarterback. And that's already what we thought, right? Like yeah. if there were, like we said going into it, there'd be nothing he could do in this game. Even if he had balled out, if, even if he Tony Jefferson this game, I would still <laughs> be looking for a new backup. Exactly. But let's talk about Darius Davis real quick because he's a guy that we always assumed was going to make this roster because he's an all pro punt returner. But at the same time, when you're crunching the numbers and you're thinking it has to be six and, and the decisions get tough and you know what he brings as a wide receiver, which isn't much. It started being like, uh, they have to probably most likely keep him, you know, like you'd have to think that Ryan Ficken's going to want his all pro punt returner. And then Saturday happened where they use him as more of a gadget player, fake handoff off the middle, hand a sweep off to him to the outside. And he shows exactly why he should be on this team. And, and he shows exactly the kind of explosiveness that I don't think another offensive player outside of him can bring. Yeah. I mean, he just has the, the, the absolute pure demonizing speed that really yeah. nobody else possesses on this roster and and i think it's easy to forget about what he and uh, what he contributes and how he handles his business because you know they're not doing a lot of kickoffs or kick returns sure. or punt returns but it only takes one play for him to remind everybody in the world that if i get in open space then there's nobody that's going to be able to catch me until they're you know trying to you know get me in the end zone but yeah. th that's what it is it's just he is so electric he's so quick he's so fast he has such great vision that if he gets in, in the open space he's a true home run hitter and i expect that they'll probably try to use him on offense in that manner um and yeah i don't feel like there was any way they could have kept him off the roster but just in case there was any doubters out there he made sure to shut them up very very quickly he did. I don't think he's going to be more than a gadget player. You know, I've seen people get carried away and think he's the next Tyree Kill and, and all these guys. I just don't think he's that. But I do yeah. think you can use him offensively if you know how to use him. And I think he is a, a, an all-world return man that was an all-world return man coming out of college, and it translated perfectly. So It did. Last thing I want to touch on here is the running backs who all got their last chance. And there was a little bit of confusion because Kamani Vidal didn't play. He practiced all week. I don't know this for sure. I saw it. First thing I thought, he did enough. Yeah. They saw enough. They just drafted this guy, even as a six round pick. This is a three way competition between Isaiah Spiller, Jarrett Patterson, and Elijah Dotson on who could potentially get that fourth running back spot. That's how I took it, David. I don't think that Kamani Vidal is in any way in jeopardy of making this roster. I think he was with all the other guys that are 100% going to be on this team, which is awesome. And then out of the other three guys, 
there wasn't really much movement. Nothing really moved the needle. So if I had to put my finger on it now, I'd say Jarrett Patterson on a full body of work is probably the man I'd have leading for RB4. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. I think Jarrett Patterson did everything that he possibly could with, with his touches. Um, and I think for, as far as Kamani Vidal is, is concerned, I think they saw exactly what they saw in college at the NFL level translate almost exactly. It, the the yeah. game looked completely the same. So I feel like they saw it, they acknowledged it, and they're like, all right, that's it. I've seen enough. Let's get him ready for the regular season. That's how I took it, right? And we could both be way off, way off sure. and, and have egg on our face tomorrow. But I feel like we would have heard about some sort of injury from one of the beat reporters. We didn't hear about that. He's not playing in the game, and he's in street clothes on the sideline. I'm going to assume that he did enough. Isaiah Spiller, probably a farewell, man. It, yeah, it, it, you it know, sucks. But three carries for one yard in this one, 10 carries for 13 yards in the preseason. We just knew he had to ball outrageous to, to do it. Uh, I didn't see it. You know, Elijah Dotson yeah. might might have been the best back in this game. Four carries for 23 yards, over five yards a carry. I don't think it's enough. Uh, you know, Jared Patterson's a veteran. That's where I would go. But will they keep four running backs? That's a question for tonight's live show, getting into our 53-man roster prediction. But we still have much more on today's show, including Traymond Morris Brash. Leaving no doubt, he said, I'm going to give the Chargers a hard decision after this one, no matter what. And he absolutely is going to give them that. And we also got to see Junior Colson for the first time in action. We're going to talk about all that and more in today's Locked On Chargers podcast. First, though, I got to tell you guys about FanDuel because you know you've heard us talk about a lot of FanDuel, America's number one sports book. But they have something a little bit different for you because right now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV, which is the best thing on the market. Then with YouTube TV base plan, you'll also be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel it at any time. That sounds like three pretty great weeks of football that you can have, you know, multi screens on whatever games you want. But today we're talking FanDuel. We're jumping back on the Padres bandwagon. You know, we are after the rookie of the year, Jackson Mayroll's walk off home run yesterday. I think they're going to win big tonight after slumping a little bit offensively. Padres are on the road against the Cardinals, and I think the offense will show up after a couple of down games. I love the Friars plus 138 to win by at least two runs in this one. Let's see if they can get hot again. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. David, it's time to get into some of the defenders that we really loved outside of Tony Jefferson. And there's a lot of guys that we could go with, a lot of guys made their case in this game. A lot of guys left it all on the field in this game to show the team, hey, make it a tough decision at the very least. Maybe secure yourself a practice squad spot. There was a lot of stuff on the line. All these guys, like even Easton Stick, man, like, hey, I hope Easton Stick rediscovers what he found last year at the end and can catch on with another team and can refine it. I just don't want that team to be the Chargers. That's just is what it is. I mean, I've seen Justin Herbert get hurt. I've seen Easton Stick out there. I don't want it. I hope all these guys get extra chances. But this is about who did well. And one of the guys who really put his stamp on his impressive preseason was Traymond Morris Brash. But I do want to tell everyone to, to, that I really thank them for making us your first listen, as you guys always do. We have the best everydayers out there. If you need a second listen, it's locked on fantasy football draft time because there are so many mock drafts going on right now. And your real draft is undoubtedly coming up because the season is two weeks away. At this point, actually less than that. So if you guys need to make sure you're winning your drafts, make sure to go follow the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. And also so you don't end up going viral for having to do a terrible punishment like eating the hottest chip in the world or having to go sit on Santa's lap. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast from and follow the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast on YouTube as well. David, let's get into TMB. Traymon Morris Brash. Who also stuffed the stat sheet, right? I mean, he was a guy that going into it, we knew Jesse Minter was excited to watch him going into preseason game number one. We knew that in the first couple preseason games, he had his moments for sure. And we also knew that with Chris Rumpf hurting his foot, maybe that opens a potential roster spot, right? It at least opens up the conversation. Then he goes out on Saturday and really, really balled out. I loved what he was able to do on Saturday, and he definitely is going to make it a, a hard decision for the Chargers. Yeah, he truly is. I mean, Traymond Morris-Brash had three tackles, 
uh, had a, a sack in this one. Also had a pick six. Yeah, that was awesome. Big man, man pick six. Are you kidding me? I absolutely love that. You don't see that a lot. Truck um, stick on trailing and, oh, too, yeah. just to finish it off. Oh, that was, the, I think that was my favorite part of it is, is right as he goes in the end zone, Trey Lance is thinking that he was going to make a big stop. Uh -uh, absolutely <laughs> not. He got left on the, the turf watching Traymond Morris Brash celebrate with his teammates after yeah. securing, uh, I believe, the third interception up to that point um, in the football there. game. Uh, <laughs> third or fourth. You know, I mean, obviously, Trey Lance threw five picks. Which, they're hard to keep track of. <laughs> there's a lot of picks there. <laughs> I know Tony Jefferson got two of them, but wow. I mean, that's uh, pretty crazy to see that. I loved it. Uh, I mean, yeah. and hey, Traymond Morris Brash, maybe there isn't a spot. Maybe, maybe there is but he did everything he could to make that decision extremely difficult for the Chargers defense and for Jesse Minter. Yeah, a sack, a pick six, three total you know, defensive stops in this game. W what more can you do, right? And also just Jesse Minter totally fooling Trey Lance by dropping Trayvon Morris Brash into coverage yeah. like that. He just never saw it coming. But yeah, we'll see. You know, it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, special teams will be a big part of the equation. I think he's done enough. On a weaker edge group, he probably makes a lot of teams. On this yeah. edge group, it, it's just hard to say. Tough. But Junior Colson is definitely making the team. We finally got to see him on the field after an appendectomy kept him out the first two preseason games. He got to make his first appearance, and David, I thought he was good. Very limited sample size, but I think you saw the goods. I think you saw, hey, it's very understandable why the Chargers took this guy when they did. Yeah, I mean, it, five tackles and in, in limited snaps. And 21 three, snaps? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty nuts. A quarter yeah. of his snaps and he was making a tackle is pretty good. Yeah, three stops and also had a really, really strong open field tackle near the goal line to kind of prevent, you know, the, the Cowboys from, from scoring there, which they very could, uh, very well could have there, but he smacked that, that, that ball carrier right there, that receiver, yeah. and he was not able to get any other yards. And, you know, that just goes along with what the rest of the defense has done uh, in, in the red zone. They, they've been fantastic, only allowed uh, three of eight uh, attempts to, to turn into touchdowns at 37.5% uh, there for the Chargers defense. So Junior Colson getting in on the action. It was yeah. good to see the rookie out there uh, because I think that this guy has all of the tools to have a really successful career. And hopefully that career is all with the Chargers. Yeah, and he will. It's just about it's it's a when, not an if, right? I mean, yeah. obviously, we'll see if he's really good, but he he was drafted with the Chargers for a reason. They, yeah. they brought in Denzel Perryman. He'll be a bridge, but he he'll he'll play this year, right? Like he he's I I think that that's for sure. It's just how much, right? I think we probably thought that how a much bit and was, how soon, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. That that's all it is. But also, you know, kind of important linebacker note: Troy Dye did not play in this game. Yeah. which, uh, you know, probably is at least in some reaction to Nick Neiman already being injured. I think Troy Dye was safe going into this, along with Deion Henley and Denzel Perryman. So at least like, those four locks, we'll see what they want to do with Nick Neiman. If you put someone on injured reserve before you have to make your cuts, they're done for the season. If you want to keep someone on your roster, like a Chris Rump or a Nick Neiman, and then put them on IR afterwards, right, or the PUP list, whatever you want that to be, then you can do that, but they have to take up a roster spot. If you don't want to use a roster spot on them and you want to put them on IR before that, they're done for the year. So they're either going to use roster spots on them and then you know try to fill those spots elsewhere after they place them on IR, but there's going to be some tough decisions, right? I mean, Shane Lee had his moments, right, throughout yeah. the throughout the offseason. Obviously, very cool story with him, too. He He's had some good plays on the goal line as well and has made some you know big plays for this team, but it's hard to say who that you know fifth linebacker would be right now if they decide to keep one, but... How about just Jesse Mender's defense overall, man? Like, I, just another strong showing to me. You, you see the schematics. You see the guys buying in. You see the connectivity, right? There's just nobody running around wide open. Like, if you had one gripe with their game, right, the, the run defense definitely could have been better. A lot of that was Trey Lance, right? You know, 90 yards on 11 carries. Got to be better about that. But also five different Cowboys running backs averaged over four and a half yards a carry, 4.4 yards per carry. They ran it for 246. But outside of that, though, and I'm not as worried about that because of the guys in the personnel that they had out there playing against it, yeah. it's just another good performance where you see what he's bringing to the table, and we were inching closer to this and seeing all the turnovers in practice. And we're like, hey, the first game you get none. The second game, we're like, get a couple. They get two. Third game, the damn breaks, David, and you turn the Cowboys over six damn times. 
I absolutely loved it. And also, in all three of these preseason games, the Chargers do not give up more than 19 points in any of these three contests. Also, I really No matter loved, who's playing, yeah. Yeah, no matter who it was, it didn't matter. Uh, I mean, they like I said, I already told you about how effective they were uh, in the goal line. I loved how Jesse Minter utilized the slot blitzes. They mm -hmm. were extremely effective getting pressure on the quarterback, making them, you know, speed up and make throws they weren't ready to make. That seems like that's going to be a staple uh, staple of the defense. And I can't wait to see what this defense looks like with all of the major players involved, the Derwin James, the Joey Bosa, the Khalil Max. I want to see what the whole well-oiled machine looks like because to me, it's already obvious that this defense is going to be better this year. Totally, yeah, I agree, man. I, I'm a I'm a mentor believer for sure. I, I mean, I, there was a couple of just bad moments, and a lot of those were, you know, revolving around guys who probably weren't going to make the team for the most part. Um, but I thought for overall, looking at it as a three game sample size, I thought they were more physical. I thought they were more deceptive. I thought they were more connected. All things you want to be. Also, sacked Trey Lance three times in this game. Six turnovers overall. Trey Lance had zero picks going into this game, believe it or not. Now he leads the preseason in interceptions. Easton Stick is, I think, tied for second with three interceptions, but not the point. I mean, they they gave him hell, you know. So I uh, just, you know, a couple more shout outs. Matt Hankins, obviously, he was awesome. That that pick he had, man, going up over that wide receiver and just snatching it away from him was disgusting. Give me that. <laughs> Absolutely give me that. Plus, you know, as Dan Fouts was shouting about, got pushed off of on that bogus touchdown he allowed. Definitely a little push off there. Don't blame him too much. JT yeah. Woods, man, kind of quietly still thought he played well. Looking I think he good. Seven yeah. tackles and allowed one catch in this game. And showed some stopping power, too. Like yeah. he, he cracked a couple guys. Like did have one missed really tackle, good. but like he missed twelve and a half percent of his tackles in that game with JT Woods. You'd take that a hundred times out of a hundred with that dude. Yes. That is a huge, huge, huge improvement. It's a guy going into a career like fifty percent missed tackle rate. Yeah. Also saw our first extended look at Cam Hart, and there was some ups and downs, right? I yeah. always, even when he came out, I wished he played as physical as he was. It played like yeah, a 6'3", 200-pound right? yeah. cornerback, and that showed itself, right? Had a couple yeah. of missed tackles early on, played a ton of snaps in this game. Still think he's safe, but the same, you know, I don't know. He got 80 snaps in this game, which is huge experience for him. But usually if you're playing 80 snaps in this game, not a great sign for your roster protection. Uh, but I'm I'm still going to side for now on, hey, he's going to make it. They just wanted to get him out there. He only played like, yeah. I think, 10, 20 snaps before this. So that is going to wrap things up for today's show. But this is the first of two shows you're getting today because tonight we are going live for our 53-man roster prediction for this 2024 initial 53-man Chargers roster. To make sure you guys don't miss it, go subscribe on YouTube right now. Hit the subscribe button if you're just watching this video and you want to make sure you don't miss it tonight. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like. But as always, make sure to follow and subscribe to the Locked on Chargers YouTube channel as well as following us wherever you get your podcasts from. We will also be posting about the live show on all of our social media. You can find us on Twitter at Locked on LAC, on Instagram at Locked on Chargers, and our Locked on Chargers Facebook page. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports, David at Drotalk SD, and you can also call into our voicemail line if you want to leave a question or buy or sell at 323-524-7924. But tonight, live show Final 53-man roster predictions. Make sure you guys don't miss it. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.